so hello and welcome back to the channel in this video we are going to continue talking about the innovation the vessels and the lymphatics of the nasal cavity in the previous video we have talked in detail about the anatomy of the lateral wall of the nose and the medial wall so the first and foremost thing i want to mention is two of the functions of the nasal cavity which is to humidify the inspired air as well as to alter the temperature of the inspired air for these two reasons you would notice that the nasal cavity has a rich vascular supply and often we see that the submucosa shrinks and enlarges in response to the amount of blood flowing into the system now arteries that supply the nasal cavity they include both the branches of the external carotid artery as well as the internal carotid artery so the branches of the external carotid artery we see are the sphenopalatine artery the greater palatine and branches of the facial artery and those from the internal carotid artery are the posterior and the anterior ethmoidal arteries now one way to also look at it would be to divide the nasal cavity into four quadrants okay so if this is the anterior part and this is the posterior and this is the superior and this is the inferior we would have four divisions being the supero anterior the antero inferior the postero inferior and the postero superior now we'll come that come to that in a bit but before that let's start talking in detail about the sphenopalatine artery now as you can see written here the sphenopalatine artery is one of the terminal branches of the maxillary artery in the pterygopalatine fossa it enters the nasal cavity through the sphenopalatine foramen so let's see it over here this is the postero superior aspect of the nasal cavity right so it enters the nasal cavity through the sphenopalatine foramen and here it gives its two branches which are the posterior lateral nasal and the posterior septal branches now the posterior lateral nasal branches they supply the posterior superior part of the lateral wall and then the septal branches continue on to the medial wall which is the nasal septum and supply the nasal septum also one of the branches of the posterior septal they continue down inferiorly towards the antero inferior aspect of the nasal septum and here they anastomose with two other arteries which we'll discuss in a bit okay so so far we've seen that the sphenopalatine artery is a terminal branch of the maxillary artery it enters the posterior superior aspect through the sphenopalatine foramen giving its posterior lateral nasal branches and the posterior septal branches one of the posterior septal branches continues downwards into the antero inferior aspect forming plexus with the forming a rich capillary network with the other arteries now after the sphenopalatine artery we come to the greater palatine artery now this as well is one of the branches of the maxillary artery so as it emerges onto the roof of the oral cavity it passes onto the roof of the oral cavity and then enters the floor of the nasal cavity via the incisive canal okay here it supplies the anterior regions of the medial wall and the adjacent floor of the nasal cavity okay and this happens to be one of the arteries which anastomoses with the artery we have just discussed which is the sphenopalatine right so i told you there's going to be anastomosis in the anterior inferior part the first artery contributing was the sphenopalatine and now we have seen the second artery contributing is the greater palatine now let's move on to our third artery which is the septal branch of the facial artery now with the facial artery if i take you to this diagram you would notice that the facial artery gives two branches to the nasal cavity again this is a diagrammatic representation this is the anterior inferior part this is the antero superior postero superior and the postero inferior so the facial artery gives two branches which are the lateral nasal and the superficial labial now the lateral nasal it supplies parts of the external nose but the superficial labial let's come back to this diagram the superficial labial it supplies the medial part of the lip and then it gives an alar branch and a septal branch so the septal branch supplies the antero inferior part of the nasal septum and this as well forms the third part of our anastomosis right so sphenopalatine greater palatine and now 
the septal branch of the facial artery. So with this, we complete our branches from the external carotid system. Let's move on to the branches from the internal carotid artery. Now these are the posterior ethmoidal and the anterior ethmoidal. Both of these are branches of the ophthalmic artery which arise in the cranial cavity. Now first up we have the posterior ethmoidal artery. Okay, So the posterior ethmoidal artery, it descends into the nasal cavity through the cribriform plate and has branches in the lateral and medial wall. So if you recall, I told you that the root comprises of three parts, right? The anterior part, which is sloping inferiorly, and the posterior part as well, which is downward sloping. Then we saw the middle part was formed by the cribriform plate and it was horizontal. So the posterior branch, the posterior ethmoidal artery, it descends into the nasal cavity through the cribriform plate, right? And gives branches to the lateral wall and the uh, medial wall. Now the story with the anterior ethmoidal artery is a bit different. But coming to the ethmoidal artery, this has a large course. So the anterior ethmoidal artery, first of all we see that it passes anteriorly in a groove in the cribriform plate and just lateral to the crista galli, it enters the nasal cavity through a slit-like gap. Okay, so through a slit-like foramen, it enters the nasal cavity after passing anteriorly through the cribriform plate. Now, entering the na uh, nasal cavity, it gives its septal branches, which contribute to our anastomosis, and then it further gives nasal branches, okay? So the nasal branch, it passes between the nasal bones and the lateral cartilage of the nose and emerges on the external surface of the nose to supply the skin and the adjacent tissues of the external part of the nose, right? So its course was much more extensive. So with this, we complete our branches from the internal carotid system as well. So with this, we complete all the arteries supplying the nasal cavity, right? So let's just go over them once again. We saw the spinopalatine artery entering the posterior superior part through the spinopalatine foramen. It gave the septal branch as well. We saw the greater palatine emerging onto the floor and the anterior inferior part through the incisive canal. Then we saw the facial artery and its septal and alar branches. We, with this, we completed the arteries from the external carotid system. Apart from that, from the internal carotid system, we saw a branch from the posterior ethmoidal and the anterior ethmoidal. Now, coming to the clinical anatomy relevant to this, as I mentioned to you, especially in the medial wall, which is the nasal septum, we notice a dense capillary network, which is formed by the anastomosis of the septal branches of the anterior ethmoidal, the spinopalatine, the greater palatine, and the facial artery, right? So this, in the anterior inferior aspect of the nasal uh, septum, forms a large capillary network, which is called the Kesselbach plexus. This is a common site of bleeding from the nose or epistaxis, and it is known as the little area. Now with this, we can move on to the venous drainage of the nasal cavity. So the first and foremost thing we notice is that the veins of the nasal cavity, they usually follow arteries or drain into the following structure, okay? So they usually accompany the arteries. The ones that accompany the anterior inferior part drain into the facial vein. The ones in the posterior part drain into the pterygoid plexus. The uh, veins accompanying the anterior and the posterior ethmoidal drain into the superior ophthalmic vein, which finally drains into the cavernous sinus. And sometimes there is also an additional nasal vein. Okay, so this additional nasal vein, it usually starts from the midline aperture, which is the foramen cecum, up to the anterior part of the crista galli. And from here, it joins the anterior part of the superior sagittal sinus, right? So if you remember the video that I've made on dural venous sinuses, I told you that sometimes there's a nasal branch from the foramen cecum to the superior sagittal sinus. Now, because it's joining an extracranial vein to an intracranial vein, 
this acts as an emissary vein and these also happen to be the general routes of spread of infection from the peripheral regions to the cranial cavity right so and also most often these veins are valveless so they form an easy route of spread of infection okay so let's just quickly divide our, our venous drainage the anterior part into the facial vein the posterior into the pterygoid plexus posterior superior into the cavernous sinus through the superior ophthalmic and sometimes an additional vein which drains finally into the superior sagittal sinus so moving on to the lymphatics we see that the lymph from the anterior region it usually drains into the submandibular lymph nodes the posterior usually to the upper deep cervical nodes and sometimes some lymph also drains into the retropharyngeal nodes so these three are the only ones that you need to be thorough with so from here moving on to our more important topic which is the innervation so much like the vasculature even the innervation of the nasal cavity is quite extensive and it's innervated by four nerves okay first we have the olfactory nerves which are involved in olfaction which is the perception of smell then we have branches of the trigeminal which are the ophthalmic and the maxillary involved in general sensation then we have the facial nerve branches which provide secretomotor innervation to the mucous glands of the nasal cavity through parasympathetic fibers and then we have spinal cord at the level of t1 which gives sympathetic innervation for the regulation of the mucosal blood flow right so our basic four categories were the ones involved in olfaction the ones involved in general sensation through the trigeminal branches the ones involved in secretomotor innervation through the facial nerve and the ones involved in sympathetic innervation to regulate the blood flow now starting with the olfactory nerve so first of all olfaction means the perception of smell right so these are the nerves which are concerned with smell they arise from the cells in the uppermost part of the nasal mucosa right so there is the presence of olfactory epithelium at the top of each nasal cavity here bundles of axons pass upward they perforate the cribriform plate and they finally synapse with the neurons in the olfactory bulb right so they are arising from the nasal mucosa at the superior part of the nasal cavity perforate the cribriform plate to synapse with the neurons in the olfactory bulb this provides the perception of smell right so from here moving on to the general sensation of the mucous membranes now we get this from the branches of the maxillary nerve as well as the ophthalmic nerve both of these are branches of the trigeminal nerve so beginning with the branches of the ophthalmic nerve we have the anterior and the posterior ethmoidal let's see it here we have the anterior and the posterior ethmoidal nerve now the anterior ethmoidal nerve it supplies the ethmoidal cells and the frontal sinus and much like the anterior ethmoidal artery it passes in a groove in the cribriform plate then through a slit lateral to the crista valle it enters the nasal cavity here it supplies the lateral wall as well as the medial wall then continues on to the under surface of the nasal bone between the nasal bone and the lateral cartilage it emerges out on the face through the external nasal nerve right so the anterior ethmoidal nerve had a pretty long course it supplied the ethmoidal cells the frontal sinus through a groove in the cribriform plate it emerged from the lateral part of the crista valle to the medial and the lateral wall of the nasal cavity and then emerged onto the face through the external nasal branch now in the posterior ethmoidal nerve we see that its course is pretty short it supplies the ethmoidal cells as well as the frontal sinus and remains in the cranial cavity itself it usually it doesn't enter the nasal cavity right now see the branches of the maxillary nerve are actually quite extensive okay and they supply both the lateral wall and the medial wall 
So the first and foremost we see are and most of these they basically arise from the tergopalatine fossa, which is actually just lateral to the nasal cavity, right? So they pass nearly enter usually through the sphenopalatine foramen and they give their various branches. So starting with the first one, we have the posterior superior lateral and the posterior superior medial, right? These supply the lateral wall of the nose and the medial wall of the nose. Then we have the nasopalatine nerves, which are the most extensive. You can see here, they pass forward to the medial wall and terminate by passing through the incisive canal to supply the area posterior to the incisors. Then we also have some uh, posterior inferior nasal nerves and also some branches from the infraorbital nerve. So the posterior inferior nasal nerve, it, uh, as you can see here, it arises from the greater palatine and then supplies the lateral wall of the nose. And the small nasal nerve is a branch of the uh, superior alveolar branch of the infraorbital nerve, right? So with this, we complete even the branches of the maxillary nerve, which are the posterior superior lateral and the posterior superior medial, the nasopalatine, the posterior inferior nasal, and the infraorbital branches. Now coming to the parasympathetic innervation. Now this basically comprises of the pterygopalatine ganglion, okay, and that is a whole another topic. So I wouldn't get into the details of that, but what you have to remember is that the post is that the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers they are emerging from the pterygopalatine ganglion and then they join the branches of the maxillary nerve to supply the target organs, right? So basically, preganglionic through the greater petrosal nerve they synapse in the pterygopalatine ganglion and from there we have a parasympathetic uh, the parasympathetic postganglionic fibers which join the maxillary nerve to innervate the target glands. Finally, concluding with the sympathetic innervation, we have the nerves from the T1 level of the spinal cord which regulate the mucosal blood flow which is involved in uh, humidification of the air as well as an altering temperature. So with this we come to the end of the innervation. We have talked about the olfactory innervation, the general sensation through the uh, ophthalmic nerve and the maxillary nerve, the parasympathetic innervation to the mucous glands through the facial nerve and also the regulation of the mucosal blood flow through the sympathetic innervation in the nerves at the T1 level of the spinal cord. So, uh, I have basically outlined what we have talked in the past 10 minutes here in regards to the innovation. So with this we actually come to the end of the lecture. Let's just quickly summarize. We have studied the vessels supplying the nasal cavity. We have talked in detail about the branches of the external carotid artery as well as the internal carotid artery. We talked about the plexus which is formed in the anterior inferior portion which is also called the little area. We talked about the veins, which drained into the facial vein, the pterygoid plexus, cavernous sinus, and sometimes the superior sagittal sinus. We talked about the lymphatics, and we talked about the innervation. With this, we conclude our discussion on the nasal cavity. I hope that you found it useful, and I hope to see you in future videos on anatomy as well. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.